What is up guys, I am Get Flanked, and I recently purchased a new account to play Rainbow Six Siege on on PC. The purpose of that account was to have an account that I could go and solo queue ranked on, work on some things that I'm trying to get better at, and not have to worry so much about my rank. Just go and have fun, even when I'm on by myself. And uh, I played my placement matches, I believe I went 6-4 and four in my placement matches, and got placed in Silver 1, and then it took me about 10 games to go from Silver 1 uh, finally up to, I believe, Gold 4 is where I'm at now. So during that time span, I played a lot in those uh, lower silver levels, even uh, played against some bronzes, uh, played against some low golds, and in playing at that level, I noticed some things that a lot of players at that level aren't doing, and in this video, I'm going to talk, for the most part, about what I'm seeing from players at that level with the purpose of you know talking about this, hoping that if you're one of those players, you can recognize this stuff, give you some advice on you know what I see as far as the differences between what players do at those levels compared to at the higher levels. And you know overall, just talk about what I've learned and playing during that time. Now, I can already hear the trolls. Oh, get flanked as a silver. He's trash. Well, I kind of wear that with a badge of honor. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that, of course, I wish that I was good enough to solo queue an account up to diamond. But the fact is that I'm not. I'm not good enough to do that. But I'm glad that I can relate with the majority of the player base. The fact is that a very small percentage of players are actually platinum or above. The majority of the people who play this game play in those bronze, silver, and gold levels. And of course, I wish I was better at this game. And I work every day to try to get better. But I'm glad that I can relate with the majority of the player base. And uh, you know, while I'm there, while I'm playing in those levels, what I'm trying to do is uh, get better, learn, and relay what I'm seeing at those levels to you guys so that you can actually work your way out of those levels. That's that's really the big purpose and really probably the theme of my channel as a whole. Now, we are going to get into the tips that I have as far as what I've seen at those levels here in just a second. But before I do, I want to say that being a silver or gold in Rainbow Six Siege today isn't what it used to be. And the whole concept that silver or golds in this game are trash, it really needs to stop. Because the level of competition at those ranks has increased dramatically over the last few seasons. Fact is, it's been a while since I played at those levels. Over the last few seasons, I've played mostly at the high gold to even the high plat ranges. And going back into those silvers and playing, you know, 10 or so matches at those levels, it was eye opening how much the level of competition at those ranks has improved since the last time I was there. The fact is that I saw plenty of players in those silver and gold ranks that have the skill to be platinum, no doubt. The reason they probably aren't, I guess, would be a consistent five stack and they don't have you know, a consistent team to play with that can help them. But there's no doubt I saw the gun skill and I saw the game sense from plenty of silvers and golds to be platinum, no doubt about it. So if you find yourself stuck in those silver or low gold ranks, don't hang your head. You're playing against some good competition. You may, in fact, have everything you need in order to play at that high gold or platinum range, except for a consistent five stack and a team to help you. So keep that in mind as you're playing. Don't get discouraged if you're stuck at those levels. There are some good matches going on down there. With that said, I did see some things, not from every player down there, but from a lot of players that I want to talk about in this video. These are kind of the major things that jumped out to me that I'm seeing from players at this level compared to what I'm used to seeing from players at that high gold uh, to high platinum range. And I'm going to tell you guys these things and try to illustrate them in a way that will help you recognize them in your own game and work on them to try to win more matches. Now, I have a couple clips to illustrate exactly what I'm talking about, but the two major concepts I'm going to go over in this video are one, that I don't feel like players at this level are playing the entire map. I think they get a little bit too objective focused on both attack and defense for that matter. And two, I don't think players at this level, for the most part, are using their utility well or even at all. I think that a lot of people who play at this level still feel like they're playing just a first person shooter when in fact they're playing Rainbow Six Siege. It is a first person shooter, but it's more than that. It's a first person shooter with a highly destructible environment and a group of operators who interact with that environment environment in unique ways and you need to be using that utility if you expect to win in this game especially if you want to move up to the higher levels and a lot of players at this level just go into the match trying to gun everybody and that's not how you're going to do the best okay let's get into the first clip here and this is from that account this is me playing at that level i think it's a mixture of probably low golds silvers and maybe a couple bronzes in this match 
And I'm going to let the clip play and then we'll come back and talk about it, break it down, show you what I see. Okay, so the big thing in that clip is I used Ying and I used her utility to win the round. I won that round, not because I had better gun skill or because I held a tight angle or anything like that. I won that round because I used Ying's utility, her Candela's, to give me an advantage and to get easy kills. And that's not something that I'm seeing players at this level do very often with any operator in the game. And that's something you really need to work on is using these operators to their full advantage and using their utility to give you advantages when it's possible. So I used my utility well there, other than the fact that I didn't put my claymore down. That was a waste. I should have done that. But lesson learned, I'll do it next time. But what about the defenders? Did they use their utility well? I don't sure if they had a Jaeger, but think about that. A Jaeger on the other team with an ADS in this room would have completely shut my push down. I would have only been able to get off one Candela. It probably wouldn't have blinded everybody in that room. And I probably would have failed in all honesty. So one Jaeger using his utility well would have shut me down. There was a Frost on the other team. Where were the Frost Traps at? I know that you can't get Frost Traps everywhere. There's only three, but one Frost Trap on the right window there could have shut me down. Another example of how they could have used their utility better. Another thing that this clip perfectly shows is what I said earlier about playing the entire map and how I feel like players at this level a lot of time are too objective focused. So one of the big weaknesses to that push that I just did there was the big tower. One person who's over there in that big tower looking out those windows can kill me very easily whenever I start rappelling up to those windows. And you can tell that I was nervous about it. I staged a drone over there. After I shut out the windows, I kept looking to see if anybody was going to peek it. Nobody ever did. Nobody ever made my life difficult over there. There's no way that I should feel comfortable over there droning and taking my time. I should feel like I'm being watched at all times. And whenever you play in the high gold platinum levels, you'll play against teams that never allow you to be comfortable anywhere on the map, whether it's because they have cameras outside watching you, spotting you, whether it's because they're peeking or running out. You need to challenge attackers on the entire map. If you let them just get focused on the objective with little resistance, they're probably going to beat you. They have better guns. They have better utility to win those matchups. You have to make them worry about the whole map and never let them be comfortable at any time. One person over in Big Tower could have completely shut down that push. And I just don't see that enough at this level. Okay, let's get into the next clip here, and you're going to see the same themes kind of occur here, just in different scenarios. I'm going to let it play again, and then we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, I just wanted to really highlight that kill. Again, another example of me using my utility to give me an advantage and get an easy kill. Now, a couple of things there. Okay, first of all, the most powerful piece of utility that you have in this entire game is a drone. 
Okay. And I know you guys probably get tired of hearing me say it, but if, if you're at these levels, I would almost guarantee you that you're not droning well or enough. Okay. And the whole reason I got that kill was because I droned him out and saw him. Now, on his part, he should have moved after he saw me drone him. He should have not been against a soft wall. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into that. But the, the bottom line is I used my utility effectively there, including my drone. And then I used my master key as buck to open up a soft wall, get an easy kill. The other thing, again, that appears here is right now I'm droning and I'm standing outside on that balcony. There's no way that I should feel comfortable doing this, especially after I shot out that window. Okay, the fact is that there's a lot of ways the defenders can kill me while I'm sitting at, right there on that drone. And to my knowledge, it looks like the East Stairs door right there that I was looking at, that door right there is still closed. There, there should be defenders who are making my life difficult there, who who are making me feel like I can't feel safe droning right here. I have to do it from down below or something like that. And again, it's just an example of defenders at this level not playing the entire map and not making my life difficult as an attacker by roaming or by having cameras outside or something along those lines. Okay, guys, that's really it for the video. The major things I wanted to emphasize here are, first of all, if you're currently playing at the silver low gold levels, you're not trash. And don't let anybody tell you that. In all honesty, there is a lot of competitive games going on at this level. I have a new respect for people who play at this level. There's a lot of skill at this level. So don't go thinking and getting discouraged that you're not good at this game. You may very well be just unlucky or just not have the team to get you to the higher levels. Also, the major gameplay focuses here are number one, make sure that you're using your utility well to give you an advantage. A lot of players at this level either aren't using their utility at all or aren't using it effectively. And that's not Rainbow Six Siege. You have to think outside the box in this game. You have to use your tools. That's what makes this game so beautiful. The other is that, especially as a defender, make the attackers worry about the whole map. Start roaming a little bit more. Get away from that objective. Make sure that they feel miserable trying to push that objective. Make sure that they have to worry about the entire map. Those are the major things I wanted to relay to you guys. If you all enjoyed this video, please make sure that you like and subscribe. And I'll have more coming your way here soon.